So what we know is that sea level rise will affect coastlines around the world for centuries to come. And we also know that currently the discussion on a higher level focuses more on temperature changes. And because we know also that sea level rise is so potentially so harmful to the coasts, we, we, um, we actually make, a, make an effort to, to underline that it's important also to look at this quantity. And it has to be beyond 2100 because it um, reacts so much slower than temperature. So what we've basically done is we've, um, we've linked near-term emissions to long-term global mean sea level rise commitment. So more specifically, we actually looked at the emission pledges under the Paris Agreement that are currently available, and they go round about 2030, and we calculated for these emissions the global mean sea level rise commitment in 2300. And I think that's, that's a rather novel thing to do, so we, we basically set up uh, scenarios that account for all the emissions until 2030, zero then in order to say that's the commitment time we want to have and then through a um, component-wise sea level emulator which is able to capture all the different drivers of um, sea level change, we then sort of projected the global mean sea level rise signal until 2300 and that's around about one meter at the moment. So we are just with these emission, the pledged emissions under the Paris Agreement at the moment, we are facing one meter around about in 2300. I think if you include sea level rise in the, in the bigger picture, it becomes even more clear that near-term emission reductions are absolutely mandatory to, to limit long-term impacts from global climate change. So um, in the context of the Paris Agreement, it's very important to also make that link. And if you make that link, it is absolutely, it's sort of a clear-cut case that you have to start emission reductions now because it actually makes a big difference in the future for sea level rise.